Hey guys, um, I'm going to try to keep this one brief. It's called Time is Holy. I'm just going to try to start putting out some shorter blip videos. Um, Lord told me a while back to create a web page. Oh my God, this, it's just not here, guys. Okay, I don't have it. At all. Well, that stuff's real foreign to me. Well, here it is. Web page, Jesus is alive in America.com. Please blog with us. Do the Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all that stuff. So it's like, well, I didn't like it because of this. Didn't want to get caught up in the, the, the swirl of information and the sensationalism and all that. But it was just a timing thing. And I'm starting to see the Lord opening some doors. Some of them, honestly, for almost free, really. No money involved. Many of y'all have to spend a lot of money, and for whatever reason, I don't have it to spend, for one. I've been doing it on a shoestring budget, too. But the Lord's been still doing it. So it's already there. Just Google us, Jesus is Alive in America. Jesus is Alive in America will come up. Um, you can email me at Jesus is Alive in America at gmail.com. But anyhow, the time is holy. Let's get back to that. So on Facebook, I've been posting a couple different things, just going early in the morning, after early morning prayer, because the Lord told me to. Everything from some silly kind of Charlie Brown cartoonish type posts to some that are maybe even seeming a little bit worldly, some that are just about dogs, um, and some really, really deep godly scriptures. Some of them, you know, and it's because the Lord told me a while back, he said he wants me to plow down the middle. What I mean by that is years in a Pentecostal move, years in a holiness move, charismatic, some denominations, just kind of a mixed bag, guys. But Jesus, my, I'm a directional guy, guys. And I'm telling you, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. And that's beauty of the cross Colossians 1 18 that we can come boldly before the throne of grace and glory and we can get it directly from him so I'm just directional guys I'm not any different than you I'm just pointing you to him however that looks and that's why I'm doing these different ones because some of them are to encourage some of the people that are doing it a couple of them man I can see that they've even posted the enemy is just all over them about some of the stuff that they post. Um, but it's all to encourage the body because that's the direction he's given me. And but one head and his name is Jesus. So please share my videos, tune in, blog with us, add to them. You can do the fact check if you want, be the Anderson Cooper of this, Jesus police, whatever. Um, I'm trying not to be either, but at the same time, We have to get it out there. We have to be his voice. We have to rise and shine. Isaiah 60, 20. And then one person put on their scripture, Isaiah 60, 22. And it's about the timing. So we're in that time. So another piece of my point is this, guys. Okay. I'm not trying to sensationalize it. Okay. But two that I just posted recently. One was about a guy that was an atheist. For, or not an atheist, but he was a Satanist for 33 years. His, parent, his mom just prayed. That, you know, man, there's a lot of sin, guys, that she's praying for. Pretty deep in bondage, but I watched his video, or his um, post, read it, looked at his picture, and the Bible says try the Spirit to see if it's the Spirit of the Lord. So that's where I'm at, guys. I'm telling you to do the same. I'm telling you the same thing. It's the direction that God's giving us, and He'll give it to you in your secret place, with Him as your source, in your journey. He changed this guy's life, guys. You can see it in the spirit. Is he all the way there yet? He's a long way. Maybe not all the way there yet. Mom's 38 years, guys, to get here. So I'm eating a protein bar, sorry. Kind of a tail end of my breakfast. So...
The power of a parent's prayer is one piece of it, and the timing. I saw another one of Paul that said one day he was Saul, and the next day he was killing Christians, and the next day he was one. Don't you think that dude had a lot of baggage, guys? Watch Stephen murdered, murdered people, family, children, women, men. Don't you think he had a pretty tough road to, to get to, to get to that grace piece? To know that God could have grace on him. So whatever your sins are or baggage is or, you know, it's the, it's the same, really. Honestly, it's not baggage. It's sin. We all have them. It's a timing thing, guys. But this is the other piece of it. I'm just going to kind of end with this. Um, long story. So short version of it is in prayer, I'll get some Podunk City. One of them was Normal, Illinois. And there was a town called Lily, Illinois. And we did go year and a half ago, eight days on the road or whatever, did everything the Lord told us to do. But Lily wasn't even a town, it was a township, because up in Illinois, I guess they're, you can correct me if I'm wrong, like I said, you can do the fact check, but my understanding of it is it's, they're, they're townships. We got to this little thing that said Lily, you're in here, Lily. It was a cornfield, guys, both sides, tall cornfield, and at the end of the street, the tea, and there was another cornfield and one house, and that was it. There was no town because they just used it as a zip code, apparently, for the farmers. So, but he told me, he said, Go there and go to the nursing homes. Well, before we even got to there, we still did go to try to go to Lily, but that's what we found. But another town got highlighted called Mount Pleasant. That's where we went to the nursing homes. This is part of the journey, guys. God just kind of turned it a little bit. We got there. We prayed for people, of course. I'm like, God, why are we going 800 miles away to a nursing home? There's one two blocks away. This is part of my story. A big one houses a thousand people. Why can't I just go to that one, God? Easy peasy. Walk up there at two in the afternoon. Minister to somebody, come home and cook dinner. Convenient, all that kind of stuff. Only a year and a half ago. So we went, but when we were up there, my wife said that the Lord spoke to her and said, we are after the one. <clears throat> I ministered to a guy named Dave, who I'm sure has passed away by now. He was on oxygen, stage four cancer. And out there smoking, and then go in between oxygen therapies, he was smoking. <clears throat> not very, not very wise decision, but you could just see it in his eyes. The guy was going to pass away, maybe even that day. Ministered to other people. We went to three different nursing homes. One was really nice, really rich. You could tell everybody was wealthy, really rich. The Lord just, we walked in, hey, we're from Dallas, and we're here to minister. And they just let us in, guys, three of them. Out of the blue, didn't know anybody. So that's how come I know it was God. One we went to though, the one where we met this guy, his name was Clyde. He was the one, one of the ones we had to go after. There was many other people that were touched and reached and part of the story, but this story and plus others, but it was for Clyde. We didn't know it, but so, we're ministering to these people. The place smelled like bleach and pee. Not a very good smell, guys. Looked kind of clean, but you, man, it smelled. But you, it, it was, you, it was, you could tell it was a government run. I'm not knocking the government for this or anything. It's not where I'm going with any of that. But it was a poor nursing home, guys. People in wheelchairs just sitting there waiting to die. So I'm saying this for a reason, because it's timing. So. My wife looked over where well, she ministered to some lady and we ministered for several hours and we actually were on our way to normal Illinois, which was my goal and my thinking and my logic. But it was a three day process to get there because we had to do some stuff for Clyde, with Clyde and for the people around him. 
too long of a story to tell. One day I'll share it. <clears throat> but my wife looked over, and there's this guy. His name was Clyde. She didn't know his name but at the time, but he just looked mean, angry. He was hurt. The Lord said, he's the one. And I was like, I don't think so, God. I'm going to minister to him. Look how mad he is. I'm not going to do it. She did. Long story short, because I want to keep this video short. He had just lost his wife to cancer. Six months before, or a few months before. And it was kind of a long, drawn out. A lot of sickness, illness, hospitals. You can just probably imagine. The tragedy hurt, pain, how can you be a good God when this happened? Well, my wife finally broke through, the Lord did, he used her to break through. Promised Clyde a Bible, this was part of the three day. We weren't supposed to stay up there that I knew of, but they kept coming up in prayer, my wife in prayer, me in prayer, and it just snowballed into a three day, two, two and a half day stay up there so that we could finish the work that God had begun in Clyde, just used us, we just happened to be the vessels. On our way out, we saw Clyde on day two and a half, because <clears throat> we couldn't find him, but we finally did re-find him, reconnect with him. Brought him the Bible, my wife wrote some scriptures in there, but when we walked into the room, guys, dark the day we got there brilliantly lit up like a thousand watt candle and this guy was just shining and beaming and just joyful so now fast forward it got another friend that close friend of my wife's and I've just become friend with her because of my wife but good hearted woman been through a lot of stuff to get here but she posted something. She said, for Christmas, why don't y'all go to a nursing home and find the one that doesn't have anybody visiting them and ha get any gifts? And then the Lord started highlighting this nursing home and he said, that's what we needed. It's a, that's a little bit longer story, but it's like, okay, God, I, there's some things that I've got to do. And I'm going to do it. So, because time is holy. But that's... Kind of where I want to end, guys. I'm doing a lot of different things. Um, I've got this storm coming to America on my heart. The Lord's telling me to just kind of weave that into this a little bit, but I'm putting a lot of it off until January, February. So, anyhow, I'm going to put another one out maybe this afternoon because there's another thing about time I'm putting. This is time one. Time is holy, and I'm going to put out a time two is holy because I'm just running out of time. So, anyhow, we love you guys. Um, just tune in. Blog with us. Talk to us. Email us. JesusIsAliveInAmerica.com or just Google us. Share, like these videos, send them. Send me a dislike, put a th thumbs up, thumbs down. Just let's connect about this. Love you guys.